Hi, we are continuing on with our discussion on series. So part one was series in general, and there was a video on that, and part two is arithmetic series. And then part three, we look at finite geometric series. So this video will be as much of arithmetic as I can get, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so an arithmetic series is the sum of an arithmetic, uh, hang on, sum of an arithmetic, sequence. Okay, so the sum of a finite arithmetic series with a first term a sub 1 and a common difference d and a last term a sub n, oh my goodness, okay. Let me back up a little bit. If you remember this problem that we just talked about, we had that rather precocious child that the teacher said go add up all the numbers from 1 to 100 and he came back with an answer almost immediately. Let's talk about what happened there. Okay, what we see is that we took, we found the sum very easily by adding the first term, by adding the first term and the last term, okay? Um, and so we can write that as, well, if this, if this is, uh, it's the first term plus the last term was how we got that 101. Well, then what we notice is that there were 100 terms, which meant that there were half of that many pairs, okay? So it was the number of terms divided by 2, that's where this right here, um, so the, the n over 2 relates back to this 50, and the a sub 1 plus a sub n is equal to 101. So our formula that we typically see, I like to write it this way, n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. And when, when we look at this again, first term a sub 1, common difference d, hang tight for that a second, the last term is n, and then the n right here, um, these ends, this, those ends, and that's that. Um, this one. N is the number of terms. Okay, I'll highlight that yellow also. Um, okay, so that's one way that we can write that. Well, what we can also do, well, what we should remember is that to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, this is what you already did, it's a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. You start at the first term, and then to get to the nth term, you have to multiply the common difference times n minus 1. You have to add the common difference n minus 1 times. Um, hopefully, you are clear with sequences. Well, so what I can do is sometimes I don't know the, the last term. I might know the first term, but I don't know the last term. Sometimes it's very helpful to take this and plug it in to that equation here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, the sum of n terms is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus, instead of a sub n, we're now going to say a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And now we have just replaced that a sub n with the formula of what a sub n is equal to. Here's the way that I like to clean this up. I would say, I stop at this point, I'd say n over 2 times, notice there are two a sub 1s. And then I just write it as times n minus 1 times d. Now, some books do it differently. You could distribute it through. I wouldn't. Uh, I tend to, I'm pretty sure I, our IB formula book leaves it this way. I should go check. They changed it with the new curriculum, but this is how I typically write that. Okay, so and notice this one uses, we have that n value that tells us the, um, the number of terms. We have our a sub 1 is the first term, and now we have d for the common difference. So using, now we use both of these formulas, it just depends on what we're given. So what I would do, like for example, on this, this first example, number four, um, it says find the sum of four plus seven plus 10 plus 13 plus up to 50 terms. Well, we can figure out, we don't even know what our common, what our rule is. We hopefully have practiced that in the past. But what I recognize is that my first term is four. I recognize that I have a common difference of three. I'm adding three each time. And then I need a, a total of 50 terms. Well, so if these are the things that I have, I have to decide which equation I want to use. Well, I don't know a sub n, but I do know d. So I'm going to just use, I'm just going to use this, the second formula. S sub n is equal to n over 2 times 2, um, a plus 1. I can't talk. There we go. So now I can plug in everything I need to know. S of 50 is equal to 50 over 2 times um, 2 times the first term, maybe put that in parentheses, times 4 
plus 50 minus 1 times our common ratio was 3. And here we go. This is 25 times, what is that? 8 plus uh, 147. I don't know. I'm going to grab a calculator because I don't feel like doing the easy math. Um, so I have 25 times uh, 155. And that's my sum of 50 terms is going to be equal to 3,875. Assuming I didn't make up little mistakes somewhere along the way. Okay, if I did, find it and tell me. Okay, next. Oh, and we were supposed to practice writing this in sigma notation. Um, with that one, what we're doing is this rule, um, we, need to, we need that a sub n would be equal to um, a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. We could clean this up and say that this is 3n plus 1. And so the sigma notation, is this is the sum, as n goes from 1 to 50 of, of what? Of that equation, 3n plus 1. Yep, that's parentheses. I don't like how it looks. I'm going to fix it. I'm so sorry. There you go. So that's putting it in sigma notation. All right, continuing on to the next one, find the sum of that. Okay, now notice on this one, they tell us where we stop, but they don't give us, um, the, they don't tell us how many terms it is. So we have to do a little work before we can really get started. So I know on this one, let's do it in purple, that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Um, therefore, my first term was negative 6, n minus 1. Um, my common difference is I'm adding 7 each time. Okay, So my formula is a sub n is equal to uh, 7n, that becomes minus 7, minus 13. So this is the, that's the rule for the sequence. Um, but I need to know, okay, well, what is 141 would be equal to what term of that sequence? Well, so then I have 141, and I'm going to add 13 to both sides, and then divide that by 7. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I was using a calculator. Um, so n is going to be equal to 22 when I solve this little baby equation. Um, so that tells me that um, practice writing in sigma notation, what I can do is I can say this is the sum as n goes from 1 to 22 of that rule was 7n minus 13. So let's actually evaluate it. This one, let's go ahead and practice using the other formula. Um, so we can say s of n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. So we're finding the sum of 22 terms. So that's 22 over 2 times the first term was negative 6. The last term was 141. So 141 minus 6 is 135. So I need 11 times 135. Um, I remember this was 5, 8, 4, 1. Let's see if I did that correctly, times 11. <laughs> it was. OK, so that was back to eighth grade math. They taught us how to multiply by 11. Um, basically, you write down what we, anyway, ask me later if you think that's interesting. So our final answer is S of 22 is equal to 1,485. Next, evaluate the following. So they're, they've given it to us in sigma notation. So with this one, we know that our first, well, we can find our first term. When I plug in 1, I get 12. Um, you can find your common difference is negative 3. Or you could find, and then you can also find your um, 100th term, a sub 100. If I plug in 100, I have 15 minus 300 is equal to negative 285. And so with this, um, sorry, that's a little confusing. With this one, you can decide which formula you want to use, and it really doesn't matter. Um, Let's do the second one, and I'll do the first one on the next one. Okay, for no, there's really no reason to pick one versus the other. So this is the sum of 100 terms is equal to, what was the formula? n over 2, so 100 over 2 times 2, a sub 1 was 12, plus n minus 1, so 100 minus 1, times the common difference is negative 3. Okay, so this is 50 times... 24 plus, I don't know, what's 99 times negative 3 is negative, well, let's change that, negative 297. So that gives us times 50. I get, hmm, that seems crazy, but did I do this right? 
That's 273 times 50. 273 times 50. Oh, yeah, I typed something in wrong. How did I do that? I don't know what I did. Oh, I okay, I don't know what I did. Here's our answer. Negative 13650. Um, there is a way for your calculator to do the sigma notation. Um, so uh, you can't very easily see it from what I'm doing right now, but... Um, Go check it out. I um, just want to make sure real fast that I didn't do this wrong. One, two, oh, well, 100 terms is a lot. So, yeah, that's what I got. Okay. The next one is a little bit different for us because what do you notice? Hopefully you notice that we're not starting at 1. So we can think of this as I can use, I'm going to use that first formula. Um, but the thing I need to be careful about is how many terms does this have? So if you think about it, like if I, if I were to say the sum, uh, the sum as n goes from 1 to 5 of a sub 1, well, that's going to be a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. Oh, sorry, I should have picked a smaller number. Notice there are five terms. But if I, because I'm plugging in 1 and I'm also plugging in 5. But if I say, okay, what's this top number minus this number? 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. So what I have to do is I have to take the top number minus the bottom number and then add 1 to it because I need both the top and the bottom. Okay, I hope that made sense. Um, delete. So what happens here, this one has 25 minus 5. You think, oh, it's got 20 terms. No, it has 21 terms. So our number of terms is we have 20, oh, my bad. We have 21 terms. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that formula where I think of S sub n is equal to the number of terms over 2 times the first term we care about plus the last term we care about. In this particular situation, the sum of 21 terms is equal to 21 over 2. The first term we really care about is S sub, it's when we plug in 5. So when I plug in 5, I get 32. And then I plug in 25. Okay, if I have 6 quarters, because, um, yeah, that's $1.50 plus 2 more, so one fifty two, And that's how I would think through this problem. This is not the only way to do it. One option is to say, okay, the sum as n goes from um, 5 to 25 of a sub n, whatever the, fu the function is, is equal to the sum as it goes from 1 to 25 of a sub n minus away those first four. Okay, so like if I have if I have 25 terms here, and this is that I have the first one, two, three, four, and then these are the ones that I care about. If that makes sense, I didn't put little dash marks for all of them. What I'm doing is I take all of it and then I subtract away the sum of the first four. So that's another way to address that particular problem. Um, you do you. I don't care. You just gotta get good math to a good answer. So um, yeah, well I do care. You gotta do good math, but that would also be good math. It is almost lunchtime for me. Do you think I can finish? I think I can. So my final answer is 21 over 2. I need to multiply that times um, 184. I am, oh, I typed it in wrong. I am using my calculator. And I got just now, oh, the sum of 21 terms is equal to 1,932. There we go. An arithmetic sequence, this is the last one, hopefully I can do it before lunch. An arithmetic sequence has a first term so of 8, a sub 1 equals 8, and a common difference of 2. The sum of the terms of the sequence is, um, so this s sub n is equal to 170, but we don't know what n is equal to. So we have s, our formula that we want to use, we don't know our last term, the value of our last term, so we don't want to use the first equation, we want to use the second formula. This is going to be equal to n over 2 times 2a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Let's plug in what we know. Two, so 2 times that's going to be 16 plus n minus 1 times 2. Let's clean that up a little bit. Um, 170 is equal to n over 2 times, that becomes 2n plus 14. Oh, we got lucky. Everything divides by 2. So I have 170 is equal to um, n squared plus 7n. And so now you may notice I have a quadratic. So 0 is equal to n squared plus 7n minus 170. 
maybe I should have thought about this ahead of time. Oh, here's what I see. I see 17 times 10. And so zero is equal to n, and there's one of them 17, the other one is 10, and I need to think about the signs. I want this one to be positive and that one to be negative. Um, so the sum of the first terms, they, we're finding the number of terms, and we just found that n is equal to either to negative 17 or positive 10. That's a 10, my bad. Um, it doesn't make sense to have a negative number of terms of a sequence, so we're going to throw out that answer. We only have a positive number of terms, and so our answer is that there are 10 n equals 10. There are 10 terms. Okay, I finished it before lunch. Come back for the next video with on finite geometric series.